Welcome to section 3.3. It is um, dealing with quadratic functions, so it fits in really well with some of the things that we were looking at in chapter 2. And so that's why we decided as a group of instructors to, to have the flow be this way. And so what's going to happen in this section is they're going to make sure that we're good with our algebraic skills. And so um, they're going to ask us to do more work in it uh, with quadratic functions in terms of identifying some very specific parts of a quadratic function and so I'll write those out. It gets a little lengthy. There's a few examples that I want to do so I'll probably split it into two sections and that's why I kind of foreshadowed that with a, a part one. Um, so let me tell you what the questions are going to involve. So it, there, most of them are going to say find the vertex axis of symmetry and oh apologize I forgot one thing so it's not an and there they want to know if it's concave up or down and graph it Find the vertex axis and concave up, concave down, and graph the following quadratic functions. And so they're going to start out basic, much like they would in um, oh uh, an intermediate algebra class, but they'll quickly get to the more involved intermediate algebra types of questions, right? Because they know that you've been exposed to that. So the first one I'll do is a relatively simple one. And what makes it simple is it's, it's already started out in what we call standard form. Standard form is a form in which you can read the vertex because of what's written. Now, you know essentially what this thing looks like um, based on previous experience and but also from this class um, you know that this graph is of an x squared graph and it's being shifted two units to the right and one unit up and so that helps us to find the vertex the vertex of this graph can be easily read by looking here and let me use the highlighter there's going to be your how you move in the x direction and here's how you're going to move in the y direction always when it's in this form now what is this form the form is I, I'll put it uh, sorry I didn't realize I was still in the highlighter the form is a x minus h squared plus k if it's in that form the vertex is easily read as h comma k and so what's our vertex? Without question, it's 2, 1. But you knew that already from what we did in chapter 2. Oh, I'm going to shift right 2 and go up 1. Now, can you see? Maybe you don't know what the axis of symmetry is. The axis of symmetry is actually really easy. And it, I'll, I'll talk more about it once we show the graph. The axis of symmetry is always an x equals equation. And it's always x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. So if you got the vertex correct, you'll get the axis of symmetry correct. Just make sure you write it as x equals 2. Because what the axis of symmetry is, it's that line, x equals 2. It's this line right there. Okay. So you need to have the x equals. If you simply write a 2, I will not give you credit, and I'm pretty positive the computer wouldn't either. And I wouldn't go back and give you credit for that because you need to be describing the equation of a vertical line. Okay, and so again, I'll remember to, to show you that when we graph it. Now, concave up or concave down, is it? So I'll put concavity. The concavity, if it's... If a is greater than 0, it opens up. If a is less than 0, it opens down. You knew that, right? An x squared graph opens up. A negative flips it about the y, I'm sorry, about the x-axis, right? It's a reflection in the x-axis and therefore is opening down. So we got a negative 2 out front. The concavity is down. And then we get our graph. 
But think about this from a chapter two perspective. We would have had you go two to the right, one up, put a dot, and then draw a relatively thin one going down. Now, um, what's the axis of symmetry? I didn't really draw that other side as well as I could have. The axis of symmetry is this line right here. I'm going to put it in blue. Actually, let me put it in red. Come right down here in red. There's the axis of symmetry. It's the, it's the point that the parabola is reflective over. It's the line that it's reflective over is a better statement for that. And so it opens down the, the two there. Okay. Um, let me go back to black. If the absolute value of A is greater than 1, we call that a vertical stretch. It's actually going to be, it's going to pull those, um, those parabolas in closer, parabola tails closer to the axis of symmetry. So we call it a vertical stretch. If the absolute value of A is less than 1, right, then that's going to be a horizontal stretch. It's going to be wider. So I'm going with what our book says. Write that a little bit more clear. Going with what our book says, and so essentially, this is a more this top one right here is a more narrow parabola, and this one right here is a wide parabola, right? And it's because if a is greater than one, then well, the absolute value of a, right? Then it's going to be just it's going to get down farther faster and so it's going to be more narrow um, you have a you're going to be graphing these on the computer and I think the stretching and stuff is pretty self-explanatory I, I might make another video where I do a screenshot of how to manipulate that um, but some of them have you graph it using the utility others have you choose the correct graph and so you will just look for one that's more narrow um, but uh, let me know if you have problems with the graphing utility that they have I think I played around with it and figured it out in a little bit of time so I think that will be the case for everybody but um, I might make a video just in case but don't hesitate to say hey I don't get it I don't see how it's being manipulated and I'll, I'll get on there and show you um, during office hours or at a time that's convenient for you or make a video like I said so that's not going to be your common experience and what I mean by that is starting you out in a very easily readable format you're gonna have something like number two most often and even when they give you number two they're being nice that's it's the same directions for this function f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2 you're gonna have to work for it a little bit okay and we'll look at others so what makes this really nice well, what makes this really nice is they gave us a 1 in the first position and an even number um, with a 1 on the x squared and an even number on the x. That's going to make it really nice because you know what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to complete the square just like you did in intermediate algebra. You're going to have to say, oh, what do I add inside here and subtract on the outside that's going to allow me to have a perfect square trinomial? And you know what we're going to add. Half of the middle coefficient, so half of 2 is 1, squared is 1. And so there we go. So what do we have? We have to work for it a little bit, but in just about under 30 seconds, we're going to have x plus 1 squared plus 1. And you're going to know right away, oh, the vertex. Do you know the vertex? That's right, it's at negative 1, 1 because you know that that plus 1 is going to shift us one unit to the left, the plus 1 in with the x, and the 1 on the outside. You're like, hey, Jensen, that does not make sense. It wasn't the same before. Yeah, it was. Remember, it's x minus h is at hk. This is x plus 1. So that's x minus a negative 1, if we wrote it in the verbatim. 
Okay, let's talk about concavity. I may be doing these out of order, but it doesn't matter. Look out front. What number is that? Well, that's a positive one. That's opening up. Let's talk about axis of symmetry. No, that's easy. That's x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Let's talk about the graph. It's to the left one, it's up one, and it's our standard parabola opening straight up. No vertical stretch, no horizontal stretch, simple as can be, and we're done. What's the challenge? A reminder about completing the square that is a far more useful tool than we ever really realized. Um, you'll use it in other places as well. Okay, practice again. X squared minus 6x m minus 7. Okay, same thing. They'd like to know about everything we just did. So, f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x. We'll separate that. They love us because they give us a 1 in the first position and an even number in the middle. Why is that nice? Because it makes all of our numbers nice uh, integers. So what do we have to add inside here? Of course, 9. What do we have to subtract out here? That same 9. That way we have balance, right? Drop those parentheses, bring those blue 9s together, and we have exactly what we started with. So why introduce that 9? For one simple reason. To create this perfect squared trinomial of x minus 3 squared minus 16. So where is our vertex? Our vertex is at 3, negative 16. Where's our axis of symmetry? At x equals 3. What's the concavity? Oh, it's up. What's the graph look like? 1, 2, 3, way down here at 16 and opening up. Now, why is that helpful? Okay, That is so helpful because we can... Um, we can know that it's worth our time to look for x-intercepts. It's going to have x-intercepts. And those x-intercepts are not hard to find. Those x-intercepts, once we realize they have them, it's where x squared minus 6x minus 7 is equal to 0. Well, if I gave you that in Algebra 1 on the final, you would do great. Hey, Jensen, that's x minus 7, x plus 1. Oh, uh, that's x is equal to 7, x is equal to negative 1. So guess where this is crossing? Right over here. And way out here at 7. And that's at negative 1. So this is at negative 1, 7. So you can get a little bit more accuracy getting that in. But it, but the point is, is you know they would have intercepts. You know it would be a waste of your time in number 2 to look for intercepts. You're going to go through a quadratic formula completing the square. And you'll find that it has no intercepts. That there's a negative under the square root. But you could see it really quick too. You could just even talk yourself through it really, super quick. So, um, so that's the power of knowing what it looks like. Those are the types of things. Now, the reality is that you're that there all the problems in this class or in this section or in your following classes are not going to be peaches and roses. You're going to have something like this as well, because you need to be able to algebraically manipulate things. You need to be able to follow work. You need to be able to work through details because of the problems that you're going to have in terms of the, not the issues you're going to have, but the exercises you're going to be assigned, the, 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 um, the word problems that you need to solve. And so they're going to give you something like number four as well. And you're going to look at that and say, oh, they don't, they don't like me anymore. Right? Well, they don't love me. Well, we love you. Sometimes we give you hard things when we love you. So you know what to do. Just do your work. Isolate the X's. Tell yourself, oh, I can't complete the square if there's a number with the, with the X squared, so i got to factor that 2 out and factor that 2 out out of what matters. Not the 4, but out of the other 2. And you'll be like, what? Factor a 2 out of the 3? How do I do that? 
Yeah, same way you've been doing it, just divide by it. And yeah, you have a fraction. No problem. Then you're going to say, well, how do I get that other number? The same way I always have. Right? We didn't do too many of these back in intermediate algebra because we didn't know how many people were going to be going on to do pre-calc and trig and other math science routes. But you are. So you're well-versed in this because you know what you do. You take half of the middle coefficient and square it. Oh, so I got 3 fourths and I'm going to square it. Oh, that's 9 sixteenths. Awesome. And so I got to subtract something out. But it isn't going to be 9 sixteenths, is it? You're, you're smarter than that. You're, you're, I shouldn't say smarter. You're more wise than that. You have experience. Right? You've paid attention because you knew that you were going to do a math science route. You weren't just taking intermediate algebra to hang out and meet a requirement. You knew that that was going to be an important class. And so you are minusing something. But you didn't really put 9 sixteenths on that side. You put 2 times 9 sixteenths. You put 9 eighths on that side. So that's what you have to subtract off. 9 eighths. Right? Does that make sense? Because if you start to distribute the 2 now, your that 2 is going to go to the 9 sixteenths. And the 9 sixteenths is going to turn into 9 eighths. And so we need to offset it with the 9 eighths. Hopefully you see that. Very, very, very important thing to be aware of. Because we are good manipulators now. That's what calculus is, manipulation. So what is this? Easy. X minus, and the square root of 9 sixteenths is, sorry, I put the 4 up top, is 3 fourths. Perfect. We know the x coordinate of the vertex is at positive 3 fourths. Awesome. Now, what's this over here? You're going to have to write that as a fraction. So, I don't know how you're going to. You, how you're going to talk yourself through that? There's a, a few ways. I'll just go the most basic way. 8 times 4 is 32. So this is 32 eighths minus 9 eighths. 32 eighths minus 9 eighths is 23 eighths. And when you plug in for the vertex, that your vertex is 3 fourths, 23 eighths, it's going to say excellent. You're going to be, holy cow, I never thought they'd do that to us. We're doing it for a reason, so that you really, really understand what's going on, so that we build a better you, so that you can handle other situations. The axis of symmetry, no problem. That's at x equals 3 fourths. The concavity, we got a positive 2 out front, so that's concave up. And what's this graph look like? Okay, this is one where I was kind of afraid that they were going to use the, the graphing tra tracer. They had one where they kind of graphed, and it's completely obvious which is the right one. It's the, I think it's the only one in the correct quadrant in that, that's opening up in that first quadrant and going up. Right? I think they have another one that's going down, but it'll be completely obvious, so don't stress about what that, that's going to look like. All right, so that's what the very, uh, well, a majority of the problems are going to look at, but I didn't want to leave you with the impression that you were going to have, like, super nice problems. Like, this, this number one was almost all the problems in an intermediate algebra class, and then we would throw these guys in, and it's very rare that they would drop in ones like number four. But number four is our bread and butter, right? It really lets us know what we're doing. And so... Um, so that's what we're in for, and it's not bad. You'll do just fine. Just work through the frustrations, try it, use this as a guide, and, and also the publisher resources as well, but certainly come to office hours and things if it's an issue. I'll create another video in which we are um, given a graph and coming up with the equation, um, which is in a few of the problems, and uh, that should suffice for this section 3.3.